Hi, Jim Castama here. As I stated in the first segment, this recession is different than any we've seen in the last 50 years. What's matching it is the pessimism many Americans feel. Witness the Occupy Wall Street movement and before that, the rise of the Tea Party. Believe it or not, fewer than half of Americans believe our future will be better than our past. And many believe the middle class is being swept away by corporate greed and global competition. And if you think crisis inspires change, well, think again when it comes to our political leaders. They seem even more entrenched and reluctant to make the bold changes needed to adjust to this new economy. But what if I told you there were good reasons to be optimistic, especially here in Washington State? That despite the increased global competition and partisan bickering, we could actually have a better future than the generations before us. Well, think about it for a minute. Washington has had a long history of shaping our own destiny. When most people fly anywhere in the world, they fly on a plane that was built here. When 1.1 billion people boot up their computers every morning, they use software designed here. And if they happen to order anything online, well, there's a strong likelihood it came from Amazon.com. And if they happen to be drinking a good cup of coffee, odds are it's from Starbucks. These companies are all innovators. They create new products and services, and in some cases, whole new industries. We have a long history of innovation here in Washington. Our companies see opportunities where others just see risk. And as a result, thousands of us, Washingtonians, have enjoyed a good standard of living by using these products, building them, marketing them, servicing them, or just selling to the employees of the companies themselves. That's how an innovation economy works, and that's how an innovation economy benefits everyone. That's why we want businesses that create new products, and we want the technology, the infrastructure, and the workforce to deliver them. Well, unlike the past, however, the competition from other countries is much stiffer now than it was before. Countries we once dismissed as primitive now compete with or beat us in research and development and the race for the next product or industry. We need to remain a step ahead of the competition if we want to continue to succeed. So it's time we seriously ask ourselves some questions. What comes after Microsoft? What comes after Boeing? What will be the next Amazon.com or the next Starbucks? If you look around our state, we have a lot of great possibilities, from new medical products being developed in Bothell, to vaccines and advanced computers in Seattle, to aerospace biofuels in Hoquiam, to a world-class wine industry in Walla Walla. And folks, I'm just scraping the surface. In all, there are probably at least 10 global industry leaders that could come out of our state. Most haven't even been discovered yet. So how do we make sure we're always a step ahead of the competition? How do we give ourselves the assurance that middle class families can continue to enjoy a high quality of life in our state? Well, the answer is that we need to have a system that supports innovation from the bottom up. In other words, everyone needs to be involved in innovation. And these are the basic elements. First, we need a talented workforce, one that is adaptive to rapid changes in the economy. For example, if you've been unemployed for over a year, the chances are your job is not coming back anytime soon. You'll need to consider a new career. And by now, I hope most of you have heard of WGU Washington, our state's first virtual online university, which I helped create this year. You should check it out. Second, to support innovation, we need an infrastructure that prepares us for the future, such as research labs for our best scientists and roads that will connect our ports 
with the businesses to increase trade. Take internet connections, for example, as infrastructure. Sure, your internet speed may be fast enough to download an occasional movie, but how about three-dimensional holograms or two-way online medical consultations? These advancements are just around the corner, but the average internet speed in the United States is a pedestrian 4.9 megabytes per second, ranking us only 26th in the world. That's more than three times slower than in South Korea. Third, and finally, an innovation system needs entrepreneurs and businesses willing to bring these new products and services to market. We especially need to focus on global markets, where 95% of our customers will be. Our STARS program, for example, recruits the brightest scientists from around the world to create new technologies our companies can sell globally. You may have heard that we're the most trade-dependent state in the Union, but what you probably don't know is that only 4% of our companies actually export. That's it. In Canada, it's roughly double that. In many other countries, it's triple that. Plain and simple, that's where the major economic growth will be. And that's how we fully recover from this recession. So there you go. By focusing on these three broad areas, workforce, infrastructure, and entrepreneurs, our economy can bounce back better than before. Our children can have the lives that are better than ours, and the American dream can continue. Washington can once again define our own future as a leader in the global economy. But the clock is ticking. We need to get moving in these areas with all the speed and initiative our state and our country possess. Again, thanks for joining me today. In my third segment, we'll talk about the state budget.